Studies often report estimates of odds ratios or hazard ratios that have been adjusted for factors such as age, sex, and so on. But what does this mean? And how can we communicate it without using jargon? Well, suppose we take a group of individuals and measure their height and weight and plot them in a scatter plot like this. We can see there's actually quite a strong relationship between the two. But we know that biological sex influences someone's height and their weight. And so we should really look at this relationship in men and women separately. When we do that, plotting the men in green and the women in orange, we find out that there's still a relationship between height and weight in men, and there's still a relationship between height and weight in women. But this relationship is a lot less strong as it was overall. What we say is that this is the relationship adjusted for sex. In other words, keeping sex fixed. This was an extremely simple example that only adjusted for one factor. But in practice, studies tend to adjust for a whole list of factors simultaneously. Let's look at a more complex example. Suppose we want to investigate the relationship between exercise and heart disease. But we know that someone's age might influence the amount of exercise they do and also their risk of heart disease. So unless we take age into account, it could interfere in our understanding of this direct relationship. Because of that interference, age is known as a potential confounder. Other confounders could be smoking, diet, and socioeconomic status. Now these may not directly cause changes in exercise or heart disease, but they are linked to these factors, both the risk factor and the outcome that we're interested in. So what we really want to do is estimate this relationship while keeping these confounding factors fixed. So how do we do that? Well, we have to collect data on all these factors on a group of individuals and then use a statistical method called regression analysis. And this allows us to estimate the relationship between two variables, such as exercise and heart disease, while keeping these other confounding variables fixed. And this is what is known as adjustment. But it's important to remember that adjustment is always inadequate. There may be confounders that we just haven't measured. For example, we might not know smoking status. Also, there may be confounders that are measured imprecisely. We can ask people what they eat, but it may not be very accurate. And then there may be measures like socioeconomic status that are very precise categories, but in fact are very rough summaries of a much vaguer idea of social circumstances. And finally, there may be, in fact there always are, variables down here that are linked to heart disease and exercise, but that we just don't know about. We haven't measured them. And these have got the wonderful name of lurking variables. For all its limitations, adjustment is still an essential technique for handling observational data. But even if you have adjusted an estimate for a long list of factors, you still have to be very cautious about how it's reported and you cannot claim a causal relationship. Now, let's look at some phrases you might use to communicate adjustment. Suppose you want to report an estimate of the link between A and B, say exercise and heart disease, after adjusting for age, smoking, diet, and so on. Now that's fairly technical language, and for less sophisticated audiences, you might want to say after controlling for a list of factors, or keeping this list of factors fixed. Rather more loose, but still very reasonable, is to say taking into account age, smoking, diet, and so on. So, adjustment is a tricky concept, but it's extremely valuable. And these phrases should help you communicate the gist of the idea.